July 12, 11 Home and Garden. Today, I finally get to take you on a garden tour in Michigan here where we are. Uh, winter just hung on for a very long time, far longer than we ever expected. We are now just about mid-May, and up until about 10 days ago, our daytime highs were our normal nighttime lows. So we were in the mid-30s during the day. There wasn't a sign of spring anywhere. And then suddenly we had a thunderstorm, we had a couple 55 degree days, and a couple of 70 degree days, and boom, spring has sprung, and it has sprung everywhere. We're a little late, but that's okay. It's here, and it's time to get started. I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to do this tour because we didn't think spring was actually gonna come. And I know when you look behind me, it looks like it's just here, but it hasn't been here very long. This tree behind me uh, didn't even have very big buds on it at all five days ago. This has been just in five days. It's like we're living in a greenhouse. And just boom, there, here it is. I was also kind of reserved about doing this video because uh, the first year we lived here, we really knocked things out of the park. Um, it was a fixer-upper for sure. There was hardly any landscaping at all. In the very front of our house, there was a rosy glow barberry bush that had gotten really huge, really out of control, and half of it had even died back, and there was a half-dead tree sapling growing up through it, and that was it for the front of the house. Um, to the side entrance, to the side of our porch entrance, there was a very huge antique rose bush uh, with the little pink teacup roses on it and it just literally took over the whole entrance we had to cut it back to be able to get into the house so that was it for the landscaping this area where i'm standing here which is now a garden um, was very hilly and grassy and i had had a hip replacement already and i wasn't supposed to walk on on level surfaces so we also had an issue with uh, the, the barn entrance right over here. It uh, would flood every time it rained and it was terribly muddy. It tracked mud everywhere every time we tried to go in and out of the barn. So we rented the equipment and we just took the soil, we just used the bucket and we just kind of scraped it all that way. And it resolved the hills and it resolved the flooding. And then I was left with this big area and I didn't know quite what to do with it. And so um, we wanted a big patio because we do love to entertain. But then I thought about the whole fact that if you place a kitchen garden by your kitchen door, you will use your vegetables more readily. You will use your herbs, you will cook with them. And so that's what I decided to do. I wanted a kitchen garden here and uh, this first year, that's what we did. I hauled in the gravel and I, uh, all the stone that you see in the past actually came from where we dug. So obviously there's, a, they filled in before they built with a lot of stone. And um, so that's the stone that lines the path. So I got these beds in, did a lot of other things. And um, that fall, I had to have a hip replacement, a second. And I had a lot of complications. Uh, that took over nine months to heal from. Just coming back last summer, I was doing really well, um, or the summer before last summer, and um, I started having some shoulder pain. I'm a massage therapist, that's what I do for a living, and uh, 15, 16 years of pressure uh, caused some, some damage in my shoulder. And so I had that surgery, and the doctor told me that I couldn't do anything for nine months. I was so disappointed because gardening is my first love. I became a massage therapist to actually support my plant habit. I could work from home, I could squeeze in clients and still be outside in nature and enjoying myself. It was the perfect pairing of a great life and here I could do neither for nine months. So last summer I could do no digging, no weeding, no moving heavy things and we had all these projects and um, you will see some of them stacked up unattended to and things look kind of rough around the edges around here and I was really kind of like well I really don't want to start anything until I get everything cleaned up and put away but then I thought you know what now is the best time to bring you along so you can see it in the rough phases 
and then see it as we bloom and blossom into all the other wonderful uh, plans and ideas that we have for 1211. So without further ado, I'm gonna take you on the tour. We're gonna go to a few different gardens. We're gonna start here in the kitchen garden. We're then gonna talk about the vine garden. We're gonna talk about what I call the bench garden. And then we're gonna talk about uh, just the side of our house, maybe do a quick snip of the front, and then we're gonna move on to the cottage garden. So thanks for coming along. If you like the video, please give it a like. I hope you will subscribe so that you won't miss any of these updates and fun projects that we have around here. And let's get started. here. I really hope that doesn't um, disturb our video shooting. So here is the kitchen garden. I have six raised beds in here um, and then I have some herbs planted along the outside. Let's go over here. This first bed, uh, it just has some strawberries in it left over from last year. They really overwinter well. They have spread. I don't know if I want to keep them here or move them but they are here and they're looking good. We even have some blossoms here. Look at that, they're blossoming. Oh my goodness, so we may have strawberries in time um, for the June Strawberry Festival. I have some chives here. Um, I'm not sure how they got there. They're just there. Over here uh, along the fence, I do have some other herbs. I have some oregano here and I have some thyme right there and I have a lot of weeds. You can see that the weeds certainly have uh, benefited from the warm weather and they're growing uh, like a weed really. <laughs> and so um, I really love, one of the things I loved about this was the contrast between the mulch and the, the gravel here. But I have chickens. I have a chicken mom. I have 27 hens and two ducks. And um, they like to come in here and scratch. And they like to hunt bugs. And that's good that they keep the bugs down. Uh, that's why we started the fence. We see the, the fence. We started this fence so that we could try to keep the chickens out. Because um, they come in and they scratch. And the mulch goes into the stone. And the stone comes into the mulch and I literally, like I have the time to spend, will sit and pick the mulch out of the stone and put it back into the mulch and likewise with the stone. And um, I think I, I'm gonna do something totally different next year, but like I said, we're kind of late this year. In this bed, I have some leftover leeks and some leftover onions from last fall that didn't get pulled out in time and they came back. So we're gonna leave them and uh, we'll be enjoying them. So this garden will be fun to decorate and uh, work with. I have annual herbs ready to go back in and I'm excited to get out here and get to work. So now we're gonna come this way through the fence and we're gonna talk about the vine garden. Oh, look, look at all the chickens. Can you see everybody? This is Penelope over here, and this is Jake the Drake. This is Mabel the duck. And walking away in the gray is Anna. And this is Henny. And the white one is Daisy. And I believe that's Tina next to her. And then I think it is, um, out there, the darker red one. I think that's Rusty. So yeah, one day you'll get to meet all of them. They're great, I love my chickens. And they're free range for the most part. We built them a nice pen. Um, it's a pasture. It doesn't have a, a top on it, but they, um, they really like to just free range. Okay, that's not Rusty right there, out there, because that's Rusty. Okay, let's go over to the garden. So this is our, oh, and that's Daisy. Daisy, Daisy, say hello. Daisy, can you say hello? Daisy, hi, how are you? Can you say hi? So, um, I have a lot of sod over here and a lot of sod over here. 
when they came here we are when I came uh, to get this uh, tilled up he actually lengthened it by about six feet on both ends this is what I call the vine garden and the reason I call this the vine garden is because this is where things that are viney go cucumbers squash pumpkins and things of that nature I do have potatoes in there as well um, I did plant they did this on Sunday and Monday or Tuesday I came out and put the um, potatoes right in there Come here girls come here Penelope chick 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 come here chick 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 Penelope Penelope hi hi Okay, here we are at the bench garden, and this is why I call it the bench garden, just because there's a bench in here. And it is nestled in between this grouping of trees. It's all shade in here. Um, I don't really think it gets any sun, maybe a little bit um, over here in the corner in the morning. But I have a lot of shade, loving things in here. These are things that I've just gotten. I had extras, and I just plopped them in. I have over here, I just have some... Um, some more sedum and some hostas and I actually have a bumper crop of nettles even though um, I mean nettles are good for so many things if you're into um, herbal medicines but I did not plant them and I wish they would grow somewhere else so again I have some things in here we had a friend move away last year and she told me just to come dig up a bunch of things so I have in here um, over here I split up I split up some um, euonymus in here and there's some rare daisies in here now these uh, lilies that are in here um, they don't get enough sunlight to bloom I love how they're all naturalized within the trees but they just don't get enough sunlight so I'm gonna be moving them and there's a path that goes through here and I'm going to um, continue that path through there this is one of those areas too that um, our house was abandoned for a long time and I don't know if it was the people who had lived here previously or if just something people did when it was um, empty but there is a lot of trash everywhere and every time I dig I find a lot of trash uh, every time I dig in here, I find whiskey bottles, so they had a lot of fun while they were here. I find a lot of trash, and I found all these bricks here while I've been digging. So I'm trying to sort them out and maybe use them for a border. Now these lilies that are over here, they do get a little sunlight, and they do bloom a little bit. So I'm planning on leaving those lilies there. But this is a beautiful place to come sit and read a book. And okay, here we are at the side of our house. This is running along the side. We have this, um, I'd like to disguise this uh, entrance into the basement, but um, I don't have a lot going on here now. Like I said, this is pretty raw because uh, I have this one, this one right here. This salvia is looking great. I bought that for a dollar at Lowe's. It had been frostbitten. I think I got it last year. just to keep it cut back because it is beautiful when it blooms but the scent of roses really really bother my allergies and I want to move it not from the, this area just not by the back door and I really would like to keep it because um, just because you can see look at how tremendous this root system is on this, this rose bush um, I'd like to keep it because this is an 1860s farmhouse and I really like having things here that might have been here during the time of this house in its uh, early period and I don't want to destroy it. So if you've ever moved one of these or cut it um, off somewhere and rerooted it and 
was able to plant it and had success with that, just uh, leave those instructions or tell me how you did it and what success you had in the comment section below. I would really love to hear from you if you've done that. So yeah, over here on this side, um, same thing. Uh, and again, the same with the trash. We're always digging up lots and lots of things that come to the surface, of course, the chickens do. And let me tell you, if you have chickens, do not try mulching because this too was all filled in with mulch and not anymore. And the mulch is gone and I don't know how to keep the chickens out of it. They, um, other than enclose them, they just really like to scratch in the mulch. So, so I have a lot of things in here. I have uh, this is a denim and lace uh, back there in the corner. That is denim and lace Russian sage. There is some more salvia. There is more salvia. And I don't know which one of these are the originals and which ones are spreading anymore. And I know they are purple and pink together. Now here I have a, I believe this might be a salvia um, that was actually an annual last year and it just receded itself and has come back and again there's just so much of the salvia um i have some dianthus here and it has come back in full and look there is even a flower on it already and so this garden sure needs a lot of work and um, i'm happy to do it i just wanted to uh, get out here and see what we have going on I have in here somewhere a little bitty cranes, but there it is. And this is um, just a mounding perennial and it is pink. And can you see it just right here? Um, it is coming back. Um, and usually I have some marigolds that reseed themselves and I don't see them yet, but of course, you know, this is just so um, weedy and just it's not all weeds though as you can see like every other plant is just more and more of this salvia that just wants to naturalize so i don't know how we're exactly going to control that but we should have some other things coming up in here we have some lilies pink lilies here on the corner and um a lot of weeds too yep there's a lot of weeds so here is just a quick shot down the front of the house we'll just do that real quick um, they're working on the railroad tracks over there and it's kind of loud so we'll just get in and get out there was like i said there was nothing here and then one day my friend said hey i'm digging up some stuff in my garden would you like some and i went and she just shared with me some pastas and um some rebuccia and more sedum i have a lot of sedum these variegated hostas i was able to divide and everything that you see here i was able to divide and actually put on the other side of the step as well so i have kind of like a matching a matching on each side and like i said there was nothing here and i had rototilled this and i was getting ready to um have a design and uh get some things but we had spent so much time and finances on the inside of the house, there wasn't a big budget for the outside. And I just plugged these things in here just to have them here. And I like them, so they ended up staying. So yep, just happy everything is turning green, loving it. Um, and no, we do not kill our dandelions because as you know, uh, one third of our food is uh, pollinated by bees and when bees come in the spring they need lots of nutrients and protein and dandelions are already flowering and they get oh look here this yes let me show you this is the perfect example there is a bee and it is feeding on this dandelion and that's the kind of nutrients they need to get going in the spring and so when we kill our dandelions, we take away their first food source. And also um, when we use pesticides, pesticides are not limited to just one, one thing. Pesticides kill many varieties of many different things. So when we put pesticides down, we are killing bees, we're killing 
all the things that we need to survive. So we don't use pesticides and even some chemicals can also um, kill them and harm them. So we don't, we don't want to do that. Let's go over here to this little area. I didn't mention this is a garden because it's not going to be a garden very long. It is a garden. Um, and it looks like there is just a bunch of weeds here. Um, you can see some some stone crop some sedum and uh, that was left over from last year. I haven't deheaded that. And there is a, a big Russian sage over there. Um, and I do have a Shasta daisy that's left. These are all bachelor buttons that have come in and taken over. I planted just a couple and here they are. They're just taking over. Everything that you see here is actually gonna be moved into the cottage garden. Um, I do have some dianthus up here and some more salvia buried in these pickers that have to be picked. And there's some grass in there too. It isn't looking real hot. Hopefully we can save that. So over here is the cottage garden. When we drove by our house the first time and I seen this space, I just knew that it was just the perfect space for a uh, cut garden. And the first year uh, we did, we removed all the sod and we piled it up over here. You can see the mound right here. It was a lot taller. It was like 10 feet tall. And it rained and rained and rained for weeks. We couldn't get in the garden. All the grass grew back. There were so many other projects we just didn't get to it. And then uh, last year I rototilled it a couple times. And um, sure enough, it rained again and I didn't get into it. And this year I had it tilled up and uh, a lot of the sod started dying the first couple days, but then we had rain and the sod is not dying. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, cover it with tarps and um, work on just one area at a time and keep the grass down. There's no rush on this project. I would just like to start a garden and take all the extras. I bought a lot of seeds to put in here and it can start from seed. I'm okay with that. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. Well, friends, that's it. Thank you so much for coming along and seeing uh, the gardens in their very raw state and everything that is going on here at 1211. And I hope that you will continue to follow along so you can see all the things that are coming. There is a lot of work to do. There is a lot of weeding to do. And I don't know about you, but I really love to weed. It's very therapeutic. I love to get my hands on the soil. It's very good for us uh, health-wise and emotional-wise. So, I hope you enjoyed as well and uh, let me know down below what is your favorite part of gardening is it the planting is it the scene uh, how it grows what what's your favorite thing let me know and i look forward to seeing you in the next video